Hey guys, this episode we're going to be talking about how to deploy your Ruby on Rails applications to Fly.io. Now the idea behind Fly.io is a hosting platform that allows you to deploy your apps to multiple regions really easily. So what's cool about that is just like what you would do with a CDN where you take your files that are uploaded and spread them out around servers around the world so they're close to your users in North America, Europe, Asia, wherever it might be. Um, you can do the same thing with your app deployments with Fly. And you can also do multi-region Postgres servers. So you can have that in multiple regions and at, that database is going to be close to the instances of your app that might be all around the world. So that's a really cool thing. So first off, sign up for fly.io and then you can install the um, fly control command on your machine. So you can use that to spin up new applications. I've already done that and I've also already run fly control auth login, which will take you to um, connect your account locally. So you have API keys um, to use fly control with that. So fly control launch inside of your Ruby on Rails folder, um, wherever your app lives, just run fly control launch and that will walk you through setting up a new application and a database. So it's gonna t detect here the gem file or you know whatever files it uses to detect that, hey, it's a Rails app. Um, then it will generate a Docker file for you that it will use to build and deploy it with. So the app name here, we want to um, you know specify a name. I'm just gonna use the auto-generated name. Um, we choose our organization and then we can choose where we would like our first region to be. And we can say Chicago, Illinois is closest to me. Um, let's create a Postgres database. And you'll notice that it mentions here is that, that it created a fly.toml file. This is a configuration file like a YAML or a JSON file with configuration on details on how it's going to build and deploy your application. So then you can choose your configuration, how big of a server you want. We're gonna use the small one, but in production, obviously you would want um, highly available and dedicated CPUs and two gigs of RAM will be nice for you to have um, plenty of RAM for all your Rails um, gems and other things and database queries and whatever to be in, in memory. So this is going to start setting up a Postgres cluster for us. It's gonna print out some of our credentials and then it's going to um, walk through the rest of the process here and it's gonna print out some instructions for us on what Ruby versions we can use and so on. One of the cool things about this is the Docker file automatically uses full stack Ruby, which has a really um, performant version of Ruby out of the box that it comes with. So when we, um, take a look at this fly.toml file, you'll see the name of the application and other configuration things such as your build arguments which are sent over to your Docker file and overrides the defaults in there. So you can update the bundler version, you can specify that we want node 16, um, we want Ruby version 3.03, um, we can also set the migration command to run on release, which is nice. And then we can tell it things like, you know, run on port 8080 and run Puma. And maybe you want to switch that to Unicorn or something else um, for your app. But you can go through and configure any of these other things as needed. Um, but in general, those defaults are going to be good. And you just need to tweak your versions here and save that file. And if we hop back, the command's finished and it tells us a little bit about our Rails app. It's gonna use those default versions, which like I showed you in the Tomo file, we can override. And it also links to full stack Ruby. So if you want to poke around this and see what the latest versions are um, and the other options for malloc trim instead of JE malloc, you could use those as well. And you can also go modify that Docker file to use whatever you need in here. So this isn't something you have to um, stick with. You can go and modify these things and uh, you know set up the Docker file however you need it to. Um, but it's going to use the full stack Ruby as the base um, of your Docker file by default. And so it's gonna use jmalloc slim and pick that out of the box, but you can go and override that. So that's great, it's very customizable. And then from here, we just have to run fly deploy in order to actually build the Docker image, uh, make sure that all of that compiles correctly, it runs the asset pre-compile, and once that's successful, the Docker image will be sent up to fly, and they will take care of deploying it and making sure that it's running um, in your region.
So we'll let this uh, build and deploy and uh, we'll come back in just a minute. So our um, Docker build worked just fine. There might be things that you'll run into here because it is building an image in Docker on Ubuntu. So you might need to add additional dependencies. You might have to tell Bundler to include the x86-64 Linux platform. Little things like that, once you get them set up, you'll be fine. Um, but you just need that to be all set up so that it works with Linux. Um, but that's a typical thing of deploying to any um, production service. So then it will push the image up to Fly's uh, re registry for Docker images, and then it will create a new release. And then it will run your release command once that's done. And you'll see all these different things, sets it up, um, and then it will run your migrations and monitor the deployment. And once the health checks are good, then you are good to go. So I can hop into my dashboard and refresh it and we'll see our new applications. Um, one of these is a Postgres service. So that's our database that was created. Um, and that is you know, showing us the memory usage, the load, all of these things. We can go in and scale them up and we can say, okay, let's use a dedicated CPU and choose how much memory we need for it. Um, so we can change all of those things. We get metrics on how many active connections to our Postgres instance we have. Um, replication lag, which is nice. So if you have replicas, um, you can see that. You can see all kinds of information about uh, the state of things and you can monitor it and see the logs as well. Um, our database is great, but let's take a look at our application. So our application, similar UI here, we can see the memory usage and so on, um, but we can also open this up because this is um, running the Rails application. So we have these IP addresses, we can set our DNS to. If we do that, we can then go to certificates and add a certificate. So we drop in our DNS and that will set up Let's Encrypt um, or whatever SSL service they use and we can use our app. But because we're on fly.dev for our um, free subdomain that we get, we automatically get SSL from their service. So we can use this on SSL automatically, which is great. And we can use our own custom domain later on when we want to add that. Same kind of thing here. You can go under monitoring and see the logs for the request. You can see that the Puma server booted up and then we can see this request for the homepage I just made. And we can see the region that our uh, VMs are running in. And then we can go into metrics, see how many HTTP um, things are happening there. We can see the data transfer, transfer metrics, um, scale as well. We can scale up the VMs and we can also add more regions in there. We'll do that in a minute, but you can see your activity, your secrets. Um, you can also go into see volumes that you might have, disks that are shared um, for persistent storage, like maybe you want it file uploads, um, that is managed there as well. So there's all kinds of things we can do from here. We can run fly control and you'll see all the different commands that you have available. Um, there's stuff to get information about the fly control platform. Um, so we can, for example, run fly control platform regions to get a list of all those regions. We can then say fly control regions add say DFW for Dallas, Texas, add that to our application. Now it's in our region pool. So by adding the region, nothing actually happens. We have an available region, but no VMs running in it. So if we say fly scale show, this will show us the count of VMs that we have. And there's just one, there's no maximum per region, nothing like that. And we can then say fly scale count to two. And this is going to set up another VM. It's going to take that Docker image that we have running in um, Chicago and make a new one that ends up running in Dallas. So now we will be able to see that um, there's a second VM running and it just takes that, downloads it into the new data center, spins it up, and you're good to go. Everything else behind the scenes is done for you. So if we look at our, um, our uh, monitor and metrics here, we'll see that under monitoring, we will now have allocations. We have a second one. This one is pending in Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, so this is going to now start handling traffic automatically here shortly once it has finished booting up. 
So I gave that about a minute or so, refreshed the page, and voila, we now have one VM running in Dallas, one in Chicago, and um, those are gonna be routed to automatically. So if you're closer to Texas, your requests are gonna go there. If you're closer to Chicago, your requests are gonna go there. We can easily add more and spin up the exact same thing in other regions, and it's just handled for you, which is awesome. So this is a great, um, really, really great system for deploying your applications in places that are uh, spread out around the world. And your um, Postgres instance can be multi-region as well and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So that is Fly.io. We can dig more into some uh, other features in the future if you would like. Let us know in the comments below. And I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.